my wife and I used to have a mobile home here and uh, it got blown away in a tornado. We weren't living in it. We had bought a house over on the bayou. But uh, 25 years ago, <laughs> I built that carport. And that thing made it through the tornado. <laughs> and it, 25 years, it is still standing. Yeah, that's funny. A little piece of history right there. And everybody said, why are you building it so sturdy? You don't need to do that. Putting all that concrete around them 4 by 4s Yep. After all these years, it's the only thing standing on this little piece of property. Funny. Well, there is my Antron 99 antenna. What do we got? You guys fighting over a bone? There's a million of them laying all over the yard. Yesterday, I was up there on my 32-foot ladder extended all the way as far as it could go. And I still had to reach up and put my new coax on that antenna. I've had that antenna there for a while. And uh, heights don't scare me. What scares me is being on a 32-foot ladder jiggling around against a pole. But anyway, I put new coax up there. And it's the uh, Mil-Spec 213 coax designed to be buried. So before anybody says anything about conduit, I've done a lot of research. And this is perfectly acceptable to bury this in the ground. So, uh, that's what I'm doing. Slicing me a little slit down here. I'm just going to poke it in there. And uh, I was going to drill a hole through my wall, but I'm just going to go through my window. And uh, put a spacer underneath the window to keep it up off the uh, cables. I'll also run a shortwave wire, a long wire for my shortwave radio that uh, goes all the way up to the phone pole and I've got it on a rubber insulator on both ends and uh, I'm gonna attach to this go in that hole and run a ground wire from the radio up to this stake and let me tell you this is an eight foot copper rod I've got it six foot in the ground. I just need to go about another foot and a half and I guarantee you there's concrete down there somewhere. <laughs> Not really, but I'm moving this thing about a sixteenth of an inch now with each swing of that big, what is that, six pound? That's a six pound hammer there. And uh, I'll do his hammer for about 10 minutes and then quit because my arm Okay, where was I? Whenever my phone rings, it cuts my video off. And then I'll talk on the phone a minute and then forget what I was talking about. But anyway, uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm hammering that in the ground. I'm putting, uh, got a wire up for my shortwave that I'm going to be uh, attaching to here directly. And I'm cutting this slit all the way down to the bottom of that pole there. And I put the coax in it. Now I do believe it's time for a cup of coffee. See you in a bit. Well, can you see? I, if you look hard, you can see where it was. <sighs> this is what I did. It's only about three, four inches underground. about uh 40 feet up there and i don't know if you can see my my uh short way wire it's probably too small to to see because it's up there too but we're getting my uh i'm setting up a whole area in the uh the man cave there that i'm just going to do uh communications and short wave radio and ham and i even have a cb that as uh, 10 and 11 meters and uh, that's what this actually this coax is for uh, I'm gonna put a ham antenna up but I think I'm gonna put it at the corner of my house on a really long pole and that way I can have two planes to tie it down to uh, on my eaves and uh, 
And then I got to work on my ham license. I took a couple of practice tests and I didn't do so good. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to do some reading. All right, let me get back to work. I almost got this done. Well, well sorry, I'll wait till the person calls back. I'm going to go over some um, comments that some people brought up. And You having a good dream? <laughs> you having a good dream, baby? <laughs> oh, it is funny. That tail was just going a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> well, you having a good dream? Oh, that's funny. I'm watching the uh, Demcad show. I like that. There's a lot of violence. He's an interesting guy. In the black population, even though we only represent twelve percent of the population. Well, waiting on little Buck Prepper to come by. Been waiting all morning. Don't know when he's going to get here. I guess he's going to stand me up. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, I'm so glad you could stop by. It's a real honor meeting you. I met you last year, man. We yeah, but, about yeah, but you don't remember. <laughs> there's, there's some fog there, but... <laughs> Good well, boy, I... here, man. I wish I could. Uh, wish I could go. Wish I'm really gonna miss not being there. You will be missed for sure. But thank you very much for the prizes. A lot oh, yeah. of people are really gonna be digging on them. Well, I uh, hope I get to see some footage of you giving them away because oh, uh, I have really enjoyed making them and I'm, I really enjoy people actually having them. <laughs> absolutely. Well, we'll maybe we'll see you next year. Hi, right, man. Several really nice things have happened to me. Uh, the other day when I was uh, installing my uh, antenna wire from that pole to the house here, uh, I stopped what I was doing and uh, I got to talk to sustenance and covering on the phone for about two hours. Uh, very interesting man and I tell you, two hours felt like two minutes. Uh, that was a, a, a really nice day. Uh, before that happened, Somebody contacted me from a group in uh, Southern California and asked me if I was interested in ham radio. And I said, yeah, I am. It's just, you know, something that's beyond my means right now because uh, it's an awful lot of money to uh, come up with. Uh, anyway, they offered to send me a ham radio and they want to be anonymous. I just want to thank them. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. There's the radio right there. And this radio, <clears throat> that's uh, CB and I believe it's 10 meter. And this is the ham radio they sent me. And that's the uh, uh, 12 volt converter, the, the power supply. And they sent me that antenna there. And uh, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do for a mast. So thank you. You know who you are very, very much. And uh, and then Shakes73. His dad died. And his dad had a knife collection. And uh, he showed these two. And uh, I told him how beautiful they were. And I did a little research on them. And they act, they're really worth some money on e eBay and I told him how much they were worth and he said he wasn't really interested in messing with them and he asked me if I wanted them and I said man I I would love them and I would you know this is all brass here and this can be all cleaned up and shined up nice look at that let me see if I can show you this without the let me, let me move the light a little bit isn't that beautiful and this is a uh, Bowie. By the, I think it's the GC Co. Solingen, Germany. And this is a Bowie. By Western Company. 
and uh, I'm going to polish the brass and polish this up real nice. And then Shane at Sulphur City Design. I had told him, uh, you know, I, I, I jotted something down on paper. John, Jane 0 he, he really doesn't want to sell anything on his channel. He just, you know, doesn't want to be a, he doesn't want to do anything but uh, work on his cookbook and, you know, put out good videos. And this is just something he didn't want to get involved with because he didn't think, you know, people would like it. And, and he's kind of a humble guy. And uh, anyway, I asked him if he minded if I jotted a couple ideas down and, and run it by Shane and uh, Shane at Sulphur City Design. And uh, he said, no, you do what you want. So, look at here. That's Jane L Zero. And uh, I'm gonna make sure John likes these, and if he likes these, I'm gonna put the uh, web address where you can get these, along with shirts and t-shirts and uh, work shirts that you could cut the sleeves off. <laughs> Anyway, pretty cool. Thank you, Shane. And Shakes73. Uh, man, I'm really grateful. And I'm going to clean these up and shine them up. And somewhere here, I'm going to put them on the wall. So they'll always uh, they'll always be displayed and taken care of. And uh, several really nice things have happened to me. Uh, the other day, when I was uh, installing my uh, antenna wire from that pole to the house here uh, I stopped what I was doing and uh, I got to talk to sustenance and covering on the phone for about two hours uh, very interesting man and I tell you two hours felt like two minutes uh, that was a, a a really nice day uh, before that happened somebody contacted me from a group in uh, Southern California and asked me if I was interested in ham radio. And I said, yeah, I am. It's just, you know, something that's beyond my means right now because uh, it's an awful lot of money to uh, come up with. Uh, anyway, they offered to send me a ham radio and they want to be anonymous. I just want to thank them. Uh, it's uh, It's one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. There's the radio right there. And this radio, <clears throat> that's uh, CB and I believe it's 10 meter. And this is the ham radio they sent me. And that's the uh, uh, 12 volt converter, the, the power supply. And they sent me that antenna there. And uh, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do for a mast. So thank you. You know who you are very, very much. And uh, and then, Shakes73. His dad died. And his dad had a knife collection. And uh, he showed these two. And uh, I told them how beautiful they were. And I did a little research on them. And they act, they're really worth some money on e eBay. And I told him how much they were worth. And he said he wasn't really interested in messing with them. And he asked me if I wanted them, and I said, man, I I would love them, and I would, you know, this is all brass here, and this can be all cleaned up and shined up nice. Look at that. Let me see if I can show you this without the, let me, let me move the light a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? And this is uh, Bowie. by the, I think it's the GC Co. Solingen, Germany. And this is a Bowie by Western Company. And uh, I'm gonna polish the brass and polish this up real nice. And then Shane at Sulphur City Design. I had told him, uh, you know, I, I, I jotted something down on paper. John, Jane 0 he, 
he really doesn't want to sell anything on his channel. He just, you know, doesn't want to be a, he doesn't want to do anything but uh, work on his cookbook and, you know, put out good videos. And this is just something he didn't want to get involved with because he didn't think, you know, people would like it. And, and he's kind of a humble guy. And uh, anyway, I asked him if he minded if I jotted a couple ideas down and and run it by Shane and uh, Shane at Sulphur City Design. And uh, he said, no, you do what you want. So look here. That's Jane All Zero. And uh, I'm gonna make sure John likes these. And if he likes these, I'm gonna put the uh, web address where you can get these, along with shirts and t-shirts and uh, work shirts that you could cut the sleeves off. <laughs> Anyway, pretty cool. Thank you, Shane. And Shakes73. Uh, man, I'm really grateful. And I'm going to clean these up and shine them up. And somewhere here, I'm going to put them on the wall. So they'll always uh, they'll always be displayed and taken care of. And uh, uh, sorry about that. The video cut off. Thank you to the uh, ham folks in Southern California. Thank you very much. And this is the last thing. Uh... I did a little horse trading with a friend of mine up in Indiana, uh, BC, BC, and I can't remember the rest of his YouTube channel, but I will put a link. Uh, I traded him a hand crack grinder for this handmade, hand blacksmith forged candle holder that fits down inside of a mason jar, and uh, pretty pretty cool. All right, thanks for watching.